Hey, and welcome to Dirty Lazy Girl, a podcast that offers realistic girlfriend support and problem solving for imperfect people. You don't have to be perfect to be successful. Every week, we'll give you unconventional, dirty, or lazy problem solving strategies. Let's get started. It is season three of the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast. And today's obstacle is how to prepare for socializing while on Dirty Lazy Keto. So I bet there's a lot of fun parties going on in your future, and we want to help you stay low carb. Yeah, right now there's a lot of picnics and barbecues because it's hot out and it's fun. It's carefree. You need to connect with people. But Stephanie, the heart part is that sometimes you feel, at least I do feel myself getting worried like, oh, I'm not going to be able to resist all this tempting potato chips and, you know, potato salads and all those, you know, carby foods. Um, You know, I don't want to be stressed out about that. (laughs) I don't want to spend the whole time either feeling deprived because I can't have it or really mad at myself because I cheated. (laughs) So I'm super glad we're covering this topic because We want to have fun. We want to know how to have fun and enjoy parties, but still maintain our healthy lifestyle. That's exactly right. Well, this topic, Tamara, it was so important to me while I was losing 140 pounds because we entertain a lot. I mean, not just summer, but year round, my family's always having people over. Um, We have a big backyard and a tiki bar, and we like to get together with neighbors. Even if it's in the winter, we'll have a campfire going up and a like fire, fire pit in the backyard. So we do this year round. So I'm like you. I really didn't want to miss out. I didn't want to feel like I was standing out either. I think that for me was an issue that I struggled with. So I never really told people that I was trying to lose weight during my journey. So I had to be really kind of sneaky about it, very sneaky when it came to socializing. So I put a lot of thought into this. Yeah, and I'm glad you did. (laughs) So let's get started so we can share with our listeners some of our tips for making a great party. Well, we are gonna be getting to the food, but I want our listeners to hold off on that because we have a little bit of advice we wanna hand out first. Yeah. Our first thing is to get your mind right <laughs> before get you even your start. your mind right, people. Mm-hmm. And what I think that means for me is like, you got to ask yourself, are you in or are you out? Like you've got to make a decision ahead of time about what it is you are planning to do. And I know that sounds kind of blunt, but sometimes you just got to decide like, Do you want to be getting on this merry-go-round of weight loss where you're on, you're off, you're on, you're off, or do you want to make a decision and stick with it? So I feel like whether you're being consistent with your keto eating or you're deciding to indulge in brownies or chips or whatever it may be, I feel like you are in control and I feel like you get to make a decision, but make that decision. Don't blame other people. Don't point, oh yeah, I had to, I had to. No, if you want to do it, make that choice, own it and then go through with it. Like, I don't think Tamara and I want to judge anybody about their future, about what they're going to do at any party, but we want you to take responsibility for your actions and be a grown up about it, right? Oh my goodness. And I've been guilty of purposely not thinking about it beforehand. So I, and then I'm like, oh, I just, I just got carried away in the party, you know, but that was, you know, by not really setting some guidelines or decide making a decision beforehand, I just kind of let myself off the hook. And, you know, you're letting yourself off the hook by not just having that conversation. What do I want to do and how do I want to handle this? Yeah. I mean, we're grownups, right? Like at some point we have to decide for ourselves what our future is going to hold with regard to healthy eating. So if you want off the merry-go-round, and you want to get back on, off, off and on, off and on. You know what I mean by that expression, right? About dieting one day, not the next, gaining weight, losing weight. Like for me, I was done with that part. But I think people have Mm -hmm. to decide that ahead of time because that's a choice, right? Not deciding is also a choice. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's where we get tripped up, or at least I do. Like I just not decide and let fate determine. And that's really, I, I, by not deciding, I decided. Yeah, that's right. So that's advice number one. But number two is so funny, Tamara. This was your suggestion. It made me laugh. (laughs) Yeah, it's to (laughs) pre-eat. Pre-eat. It's the (laughs) warm-up. It's the warm-up to the big party. Tell me more about about your pre-eat. Well, the big thing is not to go hungry and famished. Like it's tempting, like it's it's counterintuitive because you think, oh, 
if I don't eat all day, then I'll have a, you know, I'll save up and I can have a few carbs at the party. But the problem is when you save up and you starve yourself before, for me, it, it leads to a lot of binging and a lot of just cramming more foods. And because you don't often realize all the calories you're taking in the second trip and the third trip to the food, you know, to the food table. Um, so for me, I like to eat something before so I'm not starving, um, especially things that I know are going to help with the hunger, like good proteins, um, you know, and that way I'm not walking in famished and I won't, you know, and it, I'm not saying, you know, some people will eat an entire meal and then they'll go to the party and eat a double meal. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not saying do that, you know, but eat something. Don't come in starving and you kind of have to know yourself about how much that will be, but enough so that you'll make better choices. Yeah. It's funny you say that because before we go to Thanksgiving dinner at my mom and dad's, my husband, he never eats anything before we go because he's like, I want to save room. I love the food. I want to eat mm -hmm. a lot. And I'm the opposite. I'm the whole way there in the car munching on, you know, raw veggies and little snacks. And he's like, why are you eating? We're going to eat at their house. But I'm the same way. I want to pre-eat so that I'm not famished and then I make better choices. So yeah. that works for us. It could also yeah. work for you. Try it. Give it a try. Well, our third piece of advice for everyone heading out to parties is that I think it's helpful for me to get busy. And when I'm at the party, I make a conscious choice to focus on the activities and not the food. So this can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, depending on what kind of party you're going to. But, you know, for me getting together with friends, it took me a really long time to get to this point. But I realized that it's the socialization that I really enjoy when I leave, right? Like I look back and I enjoy being with friends or family. It's not really the food. Yeah. And you can even bring an activity, you know, like um, we're kind of a crafty family. So if we bring like tie dye shirts or something, the kids and the parents, we all get into it. And pretty soon you're so busy with that. You, you actually forget about the food for a little bit. So yeah, don't be afraid to bring one if you're not sure about what kind of activities they'll have there, or just bring, you know, those fun um, paddles with the ball, you know, to do a little paddle ball or I mean there's all kinds of little things you can just put in your tote bag and bring to an event and then or a frisbee or whatever whatever you're into yeah I like yeah. to wear my swimming suit when I'm going to like an outdoor party because then I know I'll get in the pool and start getting mm -hmm. active that way and playing ball with the kids or with a friend mm -hmm. um also when we're doing indoor parties we at my family like to do karaoke so we get that machine out and we get the lights machine and we start mm -hmm. singing so I mean this keeps me busy right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm like not standing there like focused on snacks or focused on eating so much. And if you're not, you know, one of these crazy people like me doing singing <laughs> or you're like with Tamara doing t-shirts, I mean, you could also be in charge of picture taking or cleanup duty. You could be in charge of mingling or I don't know, welcoming, answering the door and making sure people are getting in and socializing with each other. There's a lot of different ways to stay busy, right? Yeah, that's a, those are all great ideas. And it's just being mindful, like, okay, where do I put my focus? Is it sitting at right at the food table, staring at the food for three hours? Or, you know, should I just walk away and keep my mind on something else? So it's, it's kind of mindfulness, I think. I love it. Yeah. Distraction too. Yeah. Well, number our number four tip, and I promise we're, we are getting to the food soon, people. But number four, <laughs> we have to wrap up our last bit of advice before we get to the food. And that is about feeling tipsy. Because I think drinks, alcohol, I mean, we got to talk about that, right? Because alcohol makes us do some crazy stuff sometimes. Yeah. Are you taking away my alcohol, Steffi? Because I really want to no. drink. <laughs> no, I'm definitely not. Because I am okay. a big fan of alcohol. That's why it's dirty, <laughs> lazy keto. Okay. There's always alcohol at any party I go to. And I yeah. think that you have to know yourself, though. Mm -hmm. For example, are you somebody who uses alcohol as an excuse to start making bad food choices or yeah. what I say food choices that you'll regret later um, because if you are that might be something to think about right um, also if you are planning to drink alcohol what are you going to drink I think yeah. that showing up at a party and just expecting everyone to have a low carb or sugar-free or dry wine that may not happen so if you are planning to drink I feel like it's important to take responsibility for that and pack whatever zero carb, low carb options you're most familiar with and plan to share because people love them. 
Yeah. And bring extra, right? Because I've had the same experience as you. Like I bring my um, light cranberry and vodka <laughs> and pr pretty soon they're like, Ooh, I want one. And then, you know, you're passing it around to everybody. So also bring extra. <laughs> I've noticed that about like bringing light beer, especially to parties, um, mm -hmm. people will grab them or the seltzer, hard seltzer, claw drinks, for example, people love them. So if you are going to bring those low carb, sugar-free type options, make sure you're bringing enough to share. Yeah. Should we decide ahead of time, like I'm just going to have two or one? I mean, should we go to that extent? What, what are your thoughts on that? I think this has to do with about knowing yourself. If you can drink yeah. a lot and have a great time and not feel regretful about your food decisions, then you yeah. should do you. I mean, I don't okay. think there's any reason you shouldn't live your life. Um, yeah. But I, my concern is where people have more than they like to drink and then they start heading to Taco Bell, right? And going through the yeah. drive-thru and getting like 12 tacos. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, it's the alcohol. No, it's not, yeah. it's you. This is your yeah. life, it's your choice, it's your health. If you wanna go to a party, Go have a great time, but just decide what's going to be best for you and your health yeah. goals ahead of time. Yeah. And I have to throw one extra tip in there um, about drinking, except I would say don't forget to hydrate with water also while you're drinking or while you're at the party. For one, that keeps the hunger down, but also maybe keeps the effects of the alcohol down a little bit. So I recommend, and that's another thing to bring. They, they don't always have bottled water, so grab a water bottle and, and make sure you have it with you for your party. Great tip. So our, now the next, after we take this quick break, we're gonna dive into some food suggestions. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> so Stephanie, let's take a quick break first though. All right. Well, if you are looking for a perhaps a recipe to bring to the party that you're going to, it could be a backyard barbecue or it could be something more formal like a sit down or indoor, you know, party of some sort, but I want to assure you that there are a ton of options inside the Dirty Lazy Keto 5 Ingredient Cookbook and all the other DLK cookbooks. So I want to let you in on a little secret is that inside the cookbooks at the top of every recipe, you're going to see there's these little icons at the top and I'm going to hold this up for our YouTube listeners. They can see that there's these little symbols next to the recipe names. And if you see a dinner plate, it's a blue circle a dinner plate next to any of the recipes. These are ones that I recommend that you might like at a party because they are fancy. They're dressed to impress. They'll impress others. They'll think, ooh, ooh, that's fancy. And even if you're not trying to impress other people, I like to impress myself. So these are great recipes with a blue little circle that I recommend for socializing. Thank you, Stephanie. So now we're going to dive into some low carb party food ideas, things that you can make for your own party or bring to a party. And I think this is what everyone's been waiting for, right? They're like, stop right. talking, Stephanie, about going to Taco Bell. <laughs> Get to the food already, like the <laughs> keto food. So we promised we were going to brainstorm a few ideas for you. So maybe why don't we start with appetizers? Okay, appetizers. You know what, I, this is old school kind of appetizer, but I love to bring it to parties and kids love it too, which is just, just get celery and fill it with peanut butter or cream cheese on a big plate. And it's, you know, keto friendly, kids love it, um, easy, it's super easy to take you five minutes, it's cheap. So there, that's my favorite appetizer, you know, simple. Cheap, I love it. That had all the buttons. It was like cheap, easy, fast, fun, delicious. Yeah. And it's old school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine, yes. and I'm going to hold up my little platter here. Mine is, this is my little suitcase that I carry. I oh, love to bring cute. deviled eggs to parties. And I know that's totally 1950s, but deviled eggs are so yummy, right? And you can make them in a variety of different ways. And they're low carb. They're quick. They're delicious. People go crazy. So I've learned, I got this cute little you know, suitcase where you can put one platter out while the other one's in the fridge and then swap it for the next platter. But they're always a, a very quick, easy, inexpensive. It's labor intensive though. That's why people don't make them all the time at their house, but good. And it's I, a good I, what I love about those, both of these is that everybody loves them. They're not everybody. just like diet food. No. Well, none of Dirty Lazy Kia food, in my opinion, is diet food. I think right. it's amazing. So awesome. Okay, what if we're asked to bring a salad? 
Oh, can I share a few more appetizers before oh, we go? Oh, yes, please do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, so I have a few fast. more. I know. I okay. was like, girl, y'all know this is my favorite topic. So everybody okay. better slow down. This is exciting. Okay. okay. <laughs> I get, I get all fired up. So I wanted to just share on um, Instagram the other day, I posted a quick video on how to make my stuffed mushrooms. So if you want to learn how, check it out. It's a one minute video, but I'll show, I like to use the baby bell mushrooms and you just scoop them out and clean them. And then I cheat by using a store-bought dip. So whatever one you like, you just scoop that, you stick it in the mushroom and you bake it. Easy peasy and delicious. And it looks fancy. It, it looks, looks so really fancy. fancy. Yeah. yeah. And there's a couple other twists and things I add, and I'll show you in that video. But yeah. here's a couple more. Uh, let's see. What else do I have here? I have like all this food in my office because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but you mentioned about um, people love raw vegetables, right? So whatever I have on hand, I don't, I'm not running to the store, but you know, if I have cucumbers, if I have zucchini, if I have bell peppers, if I have broccoli, cauliflower, any of those kind of hearty vegetables, I think you can cut them up really nicely and accompany them with a dip, either store-bought or homemade. Um, I think it's also easy to set up um, like a big wooden cutting board and make a charcuterie platter. Charcuterie, I'm probably saying it wrong, but it's, it's just a fancy. Trendy. It's very fancy, right? Did I say it right? right. How do you say charcuterie? I don't know. I don't, I don't say it right. <laughs> okay. I know our listeners will correct me. Because remember the <laughs> chaffle, chaffle de debacle? Yes. <laughs> They're all mad about how I said chaffle and chaffle. Whatever. So our <laughs> listeners can tell me. But a charcuterie platter is just like a wooden board. Throw on all your favorite meats, olives, um, cheeses, maybe some um, herbs. Make it look fancy and pretty and people just pick off of it. So very easy. And jalapeno poppers is another popular mm. one at my house. We all love yeah. jalapeno poppers. And I have recipes for all this stuff in the Dirty Lazy Keto cookbooks too. Yeah. Okay. Dang, I'm getting hungry. I know, right? I'm like, woo, doggy. I think just give me appetizers. Like, I'll just stay with that. Like, to me, that's the best part of party food. Well, it's finger food, right? Everybody yeah. likes to kind of eat with their fingers or just little bites of stuff too. Yeah. So what about this salads? Awesome. I know you were really excited about salads. So what, what kind of salad <laughs> do you like to bring? Um, well, you know, I, and this is an idea you gave me and I was a little hesitant to try it, but that's a radish potato salad. So instead of using um, potatoes, you just, you, you make it just like a regular potato salad, except you substitute radishes. You kind of boil, as you say, boil the hell out of them or the heck out of them <laughs> and then slice them up and then make the salad. And it's really tasty. Like that's one of my favorite salads and it's as good, if not better, than a, a potato, in my opinion, than a potato salad. And it looks, since they're red, it looks like you use those red potatoes. So honestly, if you brought that at a party, no one would even probably realize that that's not a potato salad. And I've also, you know, been able to make a faux potato salad using like cauliflower um, florets. Mm -hmm. um, you just can't cook them too much. You have to kind of make them just the right amount of cooking. So that yeah. way they're also little florets that look like potatoes. But Ooh, that sounds good too. Easy peasy. Great idea. Yeah. Do you have a salad suggestion? Well, I do. I, <laughs> I really like broccoli salad. One of my favorite recipes that I talk mm -hmm. about constantly is the lawn clipping salad that's in the first cookbook. Yeah. And you can also use that using whole florets. Um, but also in addition to that, you can make any kind of salad you know, Caesar salad, Cobb salad. You could put pesto over cold zucchini cut up or over cold um, cucumber. Either use a zoodle maker to make them curly mm -hmm. and pretty or chop them. Mm -hmm. You could do shrimp salad, zucchini. I think I said that. Broccoli. Um, but what about guacamole? Does that count? Ooh, yum. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great, or even just having veggies on a plate with guacamole or some other dip is, to me, that's very salad-ish, also sure. appetizer-ish, but <laughs> love, that one's great. And again, Simple, right? people love that. People love it. Yeah. I know yesterday I had, I was telling you earlier, I had a five pound bag of broccoli. I didn't know what to do with, and I mashed them up and added some egg and some cheese and um, a little oil and some green onion and a little ranch powder. And then I put them in the oven and I made these zucchini patties and they're delicious. I'll take one out of the bag so you can see what Ooh, it looks like. It's not a salad, good. but whatever. It's kind of like a chip. 
look yeah really thin and that's like yummy. your um avocado chips too you did a you did that, a thing on the when morning I was on the show news. in sacramento I was on the good day, Sacramento. Yeah, with avocado chips, chips. But same idea, right? Of squishing That's avocado. what inspired me. Because I had all the extra avocado chips in the freezer this week, and I ate them all because I'm classy. <laughs> and then I was hungry for more, but I didn't have any avocados. So, But I had the five-pound bag of broccoli, so that's why I was making these broccoli chips. They're pretty good. What a great idea. Yeah. Love it. I'm very creative. <laughs> <laughs> what about main dishes? Okay, that an Stephanie, easy one? This I struggle with this one because I, I'm good at the side dishes or, you know, the um, appetizers or even desserts, but I really struggle with the main dish. And I don't, I, I don't know. I'm like, I'm going to leave it up to you to this one. I mean, there's one that I thought of that I really like, but I don't know if other people like it, which is mm. the sauerkraut and pork dish. It's very keto friendly. It's delicious, easy. You can just throw it in the crock pot. But again, you know, not everybody likes sauerkraut. So I, I need your input on this one. Well, I love to um, say, if you like it, you should bring it. You know what I mean? Because this is really about you. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. I, I like to think about, it, especially at a potluck, there's all different types of dishes there. And you're not mm -hmm. going to like everything everybody brings, right? Yeah. So bring the thing that you like and I'm, there's going to be other people who will enjoy it and try something new. It's fun to not have the same old, same old. So I think yeah. bringing something that you enjoy, that you're confident is going to make you feel, you know, yeah. on board with your own health goals. That makes more yeah. sense to me than trying to please other people. Right. And you right? know, you'll, you'll be happy and satisfied. And that's what matters. Right. Really. Right. I mean, I know I'm laughing when I say that, but it's true. Especially, yeah. you know, it depends on the kind of party, but you could bring a tray of chicken wings easy. Ooh, Everybody yes. likes those. You could bring meatballs. I mean, of all different types of meats, whatever the ones that you like. I like to serve them in little cupcake um, paper wrappers with a toothpick. That way everybody can enjoy and they're easy to pour it around. Yeah. But I think it's it's easy too to do things that are like a bar. I like to do taco bars or a burger bar where all the fixings are kind of set up separately. And then people can decide if they want to make a taco salad or mm -hmm. put their meat and toppings in a shell. Uh, same thing with a burger bar. You could have the big yeah. giant lettuce leaves available or you could have buns. So That's it doesn't have to be ideas. so, it doesn't have to be like a casserole where it gets complicated yeah. and kind of stressful. Yeah, I think maybe I was thinking more, you know, like you have to show up with a fancy main dish or whatever, but. I mean, I those are available, idea, right? I mean, like I was saying in the cookbook with the little blue dinner plate if you wanted to make like a formal casserole but i think mm -hmm. it can be easier like what about just what about the grill you mm -hmm. know what could you grill at a barbecue that would be simple and still low carb but non-stressful and then yeah. for me it was important like i was sharing to not feel weird because <laughs> yeah. that's a component of my issue like i didn't want people looking at me and what is she eating i wanted to bring like steaks chicken hamburgers yeah. portobello mushrooms asparagus yeah zucchini kebabs things that could just get tossed yeah. on the grill kind of blend in with everybody else yeah. and then if they start handing me corn i just say ah eh, no thanks yeah and i've been really into um grilling ribs barbecue ribs and <clears throat> some of these new barbecue sauces without sugar are really good <laughs> especially on the ribs so i like um i would go with ribs because again just another meat that most people enjoy simple yeah easy peasy yeah look at all these ideas well, i know okay, see it's like you think it's going to be stressful and then it turns out you're like oh my gosh totally easy i could do that it's it's not hard actually i think because everything we've suggested so far are really basic i mean veggies yeah. dip veggies <laughs> throw dip. some meat on a grill <laughs> and i had a few more easy. things over here I, I forgot to share it's like you can even make cut up cheese platters, right? Like I've grabbed this ball of mozzarella and I'll, I'll do that before people come over and just put out a big platter, right? It's like, okay, what do I have? Cause I'm always stressed out. Oh, people yeah. are showing up in a half an hour. So I'll get out pepperoni. I'll get out little smoky sticks. Yeah. I'll cut up whatever cheese I happen to have available. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to someone else's house, I try to bring a cute plate. If it's not a formal plate like this one where you leave it behind and it pays it forward, it's called a giving oh. plate. Isn't that cute? Oh, that's so but you could also cute. do the plastic plates from the dollar store. Buy them in bright colors and fun little shapes and leave them behind. 
Yeah, great idea. Now, what about dessert, Stephanie? Ooh, now you're talking. <laughs> well, I think this, for me anyway, I know that in my journey, this was an area I had to really be conscious of because it's easy at a barbecue or a social event when the desserts come out and they look so pretty or the cookies or the brownies, it's easy to think one doesn't matter. I mean, have you ever been down that road where you're like, oh, I can just have one? Yes. <laughs> Too many <'Cause>, times. <laughs> yeah, because I can't do that. I mean, I can't just have one. If I have one, it'll lead to five or six. And then I think, oh, well, to hell with it. I already have five or six. I might as well do whatever I want the rest of the day or week or month or year. I mean, for me, that's what would happen. It was a very yeah. slippery slope. So I have to really be aware of the dessert issue. That's yeah, my hot too. topic. Yeah. Yeah. And I would, this is a little bit off the top, off the grid, but even if they say, oh, I need you to bring a side dish, I'll actually bring a side dish and a dessert because I know if I don't, I won't get a low carb dessert. So mm -hmm. I would say just be unconventional, even if they don't, or if they say, oh, we don't need you to bring anything, just bring it anyway. Bring it you anyway. Know? Yep. Yeah. I always do the same thing and pre-eat. <laughs> it's funny because the college kids do the pre-heat, meaning pre-drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now at our age, we're doing the pre-eat. Yeah. I love it. Well, so what do you I, bring for I, your dessert? Do you have a sugar-free dessert yeah, option that the you one tend I like, to bring? The one I like the most, um, and you have so many good ones, um, but the one I like is your um, the chocolate chip recipe you have, chocolate chip cookies. Because to me, those are like the quintessential like American barbecue type dessert food. And it travels well, even though they've got chocolate, but they don't, they tend not to melt when they're in a cookie. So they're perfect for barbecues and I like them. And then they're pre-portioned. So I know I could have one or maybe I know what I'm getting with each cookie. So that would be my recommendation is um, bring the, bring a cookie, especially the chocolate chip, just because they're yummy. One. Yeah, they're delicious. Mm -hmm. um, I like to also bring the peanut butter um, pie that's in the Dirt Ooh. Cheap cookbook. It has the chocolate crust. I think that one goes over really well at parties. Yeah. Um, and then just to be simple, if I want to just be completely easy peasy, like stopping on the way at a grocery store, you know, like no effort, no cooking, I will just buy various berries and a can of whipped cream and maybe some nuts because everybody loves berries. And if you just wash them, yeah. stick them in some cute bowls, and then people can eat them with their fingers or build a little sundae or whatever they want, but I can eat that too. Mm -hmm. um, I also like sugar-free Jello cups. Those are easy and portable and good for the kids. And then if I was gonna make something maybe that I wanted to do more baking, I would try the strawberry shortcake recipe that's from the Dirt Cheap Cookbook as well. Ooh, that one's so good. I remember he came to my house that morning I was cooking and I'm like, try this, try I this. Know. Do you like it? Is saying, it weird? Do you like it? I know. And I kept saying like, this is low carb because it, it, it doesn't, it tastes so good. You're always so shocked. I'm like, I know. <laughs> okay, Tamara. I know. When am I just going to have faith? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still working on you. I know. Well, I'm curious what low carb socializing tips and recipes our listeners have. Email us at stephanie at dirtylazyketo.com or leave a comment on YouTube. If your comment is read on the air during season three, contact Stephanie and get a prize. But before we get to our final hacks, let's take one last break. Wonderful. Well, I want to share with you my recipe call out, and this is from the Dirty Lazy Keto five ingredient cookbook. And this is called the orange crush chicken. Okay. And I feel like it is a showstopper. Now from the name of it, you might be able to guess one of the ingredients. It's called orange crush chicken. Okay. It's on page 155. And what's so fun about this recipe is the bright color, the delicious taste, but I think it's fun. The original recipe. So it does have a secret ingredient, which I'm dying. If you can guess, can you guess anyone? <laughs> but it is so fun and it's just five main ingredients to make this recipe i'm going to show you a picture of it and it's a fun recipe to share at a potluck or to make for a social event so there you go i highly recommend it from the dirt cheap five ingredient cookbook thank you stephanie okay we're going to wrap up by each sharing our favorite hack for socializing while staying strong with our healthy low carb eating lifestyle well, I'm going to go first and my dirty or lazy hack 
is what I like to call the peanut allergy test. Now I have been dying to share this because it's something I do in private and I'm like, I should tell other people this because I think it's actually a really good hack. So whenever I start thinking about a situation, you know, with some kind of mysterious food and about should I eat it, should I not? What if I pretend I don't know if it's bad for me or good for me? You know what I mean? Like you have those little conversations. So I start to think, okay, I'm gonna apply the peanut allergy test to the situation about whether or not I should eat this food. Um, so what I think about is what if my child was deathly allergic to peanuts? What if one little bite of peanut would kill my child? Do you think I would just hand my child that mysterious food knowing that it might contain peanuts? Or do you think I might ask the waiter, the, the hostess, whoever made the food, do you think I might ask them like 1000 questions? So for me, that really helps. I think about myself in terms of low carb foods and dirty, lazy keto foods, because because for me, it is life and death. I, I can't operate by eating foods with sugar and flour. So I need to ask questions. And for me, having the peanut allergy test helps me feel like I'm back in control and make better choices. I love that. For me, it's the knee pain test <laughs> because... Oh. I get, when I'm bad and get too much sugar, I'll get inflammation and my joints, especially my knees will really hurt. And I, I have to remind myself, are you going to be paying for this with like painful knees later? And it really does help me, you know, not make the bad choice. <laughs> okay. My hack is, um, sort of what to do after you've been to a party and let's say you didn't stick to your plan like you wanted to, it happens. And I'm giving this advice because sometimes when you mess up like that and you don't forgive yourself and you don't dust yourself off, you'll do, you'll either keep spiraling out of control or you'll start punishing yourself by then starving yourself the next day. And I think either of those responses are not good responses. Don't starve yourself and punish yourself and make yourself run 100 laps the next day. But at the same time, don't completely go off the rails and just go on an eating binge. So I so the best advice I could give you is to just get back on plan. Don't, don't punish yourself. Don't go extra strict on your plan. Just have your normal keto breakfast and then move forward and you will you know, you'll get past that one bad party, no problem. Well, the big message today, folks, is that social events don't have to be a minefield for the dirty, lazy keto way of life. With a little bit of time, planning, practicing, and even visualizing what kind of experience you want to have, you will be able to thrive and not just survive when faced with socializing obstacles. And are you enjoying the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast? Show your support by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to the Dirty Lazy Keto channel. Well, we love reading your comments and your reviews. And in fact, here is something a listener wrote. This is also from YouTube, and it was written by Lane about um, the episode, How to Be Confident in a Swimsuit. And this was our episode we did on body positive bikinis and bathing suits and plus size swimwear. And it was episode number 21 of season three. So Lane wrote, and this one made me laugh. Lane said, I love how Tamara's dogs bark and make noises sometimes in the video. It's those little things that make you two so special and so real. I love your podcast and I gained so much insight and support from both of you. So thank you, Lane. Thank you, Lane, and I'm glad Mamba has a fan. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you'll never miss a video, and we'll see you next week. I have a ton of resources out there to help you. You can go to my website at dirtylazyketo.com to learn more, 